Greetings gamers, welcome back everyone to my first ever video of FM20. The brand new game is out and the first thing I'm going to do for you guys, because as I previously discussed in one of my videos and my kind of looking forward to FM20 video, during the beta I'm just going to be concentrating on doing well, tips, guides, experiments, that kind of stuff for the next sort of two and a little bit weeks because I've announced it a little bit earlier. Um, and then on the kind of main release day of 19th of November, that's where I'll kick on with a main save. I decided not to really do a beta save because it will just take so much of my time up doing that. that I couldn't do with these kind of stuff that a lot of people do like to sort of see and have around, especially during this kind of early stage of the game. And then we can just get stuck into the proper game when hopefully all the bugs and things are ironed out sufficiently and we can crack on then. So that's kind of the, the reasons why. So in terms of today's one then, I get a last quite a lot because I basically sign regen players as a kind of a that's generally what I sign and I hunt out all the possible regens as possible. How do I do that? So I do this video every year, especially for new players or those that are interested and even if it's like six months down the line, you can sort of look back and you know if I've sort of pointed doing the video to say, check this out, you know, if you're asking me how do you sign all those players, well this is the the way to do it. And I will be doing a separate video on kind of the traditional scouting methods as well. So check that out if this isn't the one for you or you want to obviously have all the different breadths of scouting knowledge. Now, like I said, this just applies to your regions, but the first few little bits to have set up basically is under the staff tab. You've got your responsibilities. Now, it's changed a little bit this year, so you need to go into the scouting. But these two little bits here, if you want to do this method, I really would suggest changing that from, it's usually set as dirt shortlist, and that is when you scout a player. So when you click like get scout report, if by default, it will be set to not do anything other than scout them. It will add them to your shortlist. And if you can't really track who you've scouted, you've got to go back and find them. And you're not going to do that. So have it set indefinitely because then you can remove them as and when you don't want them anymore. Also, when you scout a player, I think it's set to either one match or one week. I set that to a little bit longer just so your scouts can actually do a decent amount of scouting. At the end of the day, you'll be able to spot them early enough. If they're not going to be good enough, cancel that scouting, move them on. Um, but if they are doing pretty, you know, they are looking like a promising player, your scouts aren't going to constantly be coming back after one match and you've got to resend them out a month. You should get a decent amount of knowledge out of that player. So that's why I set those first two bits and you will, they will come in useful for you. Now, the next thing is under scouting and your shortlists. This is my um, scouting shortlist view. And I will be doing a separate video on where you can kind of get this. I will put it up for download. So do check that one out. It might be already out by now uh, when you're watching this. So go go along. You can find that. I will also probably do one uh, and maybe in the same video showing you my squad views as well. So you might be able to pick this up for yourself by then. If you're watching it straight away, then you might have to wait a couple of days in sort of next week for me to do that video. But you've got this tab and you really want to have like your main important things. You can sort of pause it and sort of see where I've got it here. But obviously you're wanting like the recommendations, Billy, potential. Uh, knowledge levels, you know, how scouted they are, club, nationality, because that can be important when you want in particular ones. I always go for like the minimum fees and asking prices because you can pick up a few bargains and, and various bits in there. The next thing then is set up a separate one. It's actually default one, which is where all your players are going to generally go into. But I set one called the holding pen and you'll know why in a second. So that's kind of the first little bit there. Now the next thing is when you're ready to go then, and just so you know, I've not actually been playing this save in the background. I just simmed it on. It's Legionide on a, a season just so I had some data, just so I had some actual regions in the game that we could actually show you doing. So I've not actually got us promoted to the Premier League, although they have got promoted to the Premier League, which is very awesome. Thank you very much, Bielsa. Um, so anyway, we'll go to Control w on your keyboard. Key, I key, cannot say that word. <laughs> keyboard. And... It will take you to the transfers page. Normally, it won't take you straight to youth intake, but I've already been on this page a second ago because I did a recording and then I completely mumbled the words, so I've started again. But yes, go to youth intake. You'll probably be on like all or some all transfers, so then change it to youth intake. The page has changed a little bit from the previous versions where you normally just had a little tab at the bottom top here where you'd sort of cycle each month. Now, I've got to remember, I've only got the championship sort of loaded. Uh, and Premier League in England, no other nations, so there's not tons on here. But you can see from 2019, that was all there was. And 2020, a fair bit more. Uh, I think it was about 800 players or something in total. Yeah, but not obviously like crazy amounts that you would get normally with various leagues loaded. But the first thing I do is 
if you've only got a small amount to do, and what I normally do for myself is I, every couple of months, I go into here and I select the players that are new, right click, scouting, and get a scout report. Now, you can only do 50 at a time, so sometimes it can get a bit annoying, but I'll show you in a second how to sort of get around that a little bit. The main thing that's going to be your friend is like a whiteboard or a piece of paper, a notepad open, anything. Because basically what you want to do is, let's say if we look now at the 27th of June 2020 and I scout these players, let's say. And then I might look again in a month's time in game or even a couple of months, you know, a couple of loads up of the game. So you're not doing it constantly. I try and spread them out because it can be a bit of a tedious task. But if you write down the date when you did it, you are then just scouting for any players or looking for any players on here between the day you're looking and when you last did it. So that way you're not going to duplicate scout any players. So that is, again, a little tip for you. But if we look here, we've got loads of players. So like I said, about 700, we can't scout them all. So this is where it gets a little bit more awkward. Now, the thing I do then is I select them all. So again... If you're only doing this like a month space, you might only have like 50. So you could just go straight away and just scout them all. If you've got lots of leagues loaded, even for a month's gap, you might hit a few hundred. And you need to do this anyway. But I'm going to hit them all. And we'll actually go for about half. Because again, generally you can only select about 500 at a time. Even when you're doing sort of like setting things up. So that was a bit too large. So let's just go for yeah, 45. So here we go. I can add to shortlist now. You can still see I can't uh, scout. I can... Uh, Assign analysts, and that's about it. I can add them to our holding pen shortlist. And then I'll select the other portion as well, just so I can do it all. And I'll add them to the shortlist as well. So this is where this second shortlist comes in handy for us. So I can now go to that second shortlist. And there's a few various things you can do. And this is what you can kind of do when I mentioned earlier, where you're a kind of a small-ish club. Like I say, it's not going to work too well with like a really low club, but even like a championship club or some smaller nations abroad, you could still use this technique with a limited amount of scouts because you can get rid of the players that aren't going to join you. The first thing to do is this button up here, the interested in transfer. Take that because if you look here, we've got players from like PSG and City and Tottenham and Man United. I mean, even as Leeds, most of them aren't going to join us. You know, first season Premier League, all that kind of good stuff. We can change it to sort of slightly interested. So you can see now it's gone from 686 players, which is weird because there was 700 and odd in that shortlist, but okay, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, and it's gone down to 328. So we've saved our scouts having to scout through about half of those already. So that saved us tons of time because those players aren't going to join us or are very unlikely to join us. So it saves us all that time. So that's about 10 scouts you've sort of saved needing at your club right there uh, to get through at about the same rate. Now, all you then got to do is go through and scout them. Now, you can only do 50 at a time, so use a couple of mouse wheels along and it'll get you... Uh, they are bigger boxes this year for some reason. I really wish these were smaller boxes. Don't know why they need to be so big. Uh, but yeah, so 52, so lock a few off, and there we go. And you can just get scout report. And this, oh, first time I've ever done it. So, and this is what I meant by the fact that um, if you have it set up to add to shortlist, they will now automatically go into my default shortlist and they'll also scout for a month. So I don't need to do any of those bits additionally. It's all just done in that click. So I can now just keep going through and I say just keep scouting. Obviously, that was only 30, so I'll do a bit of a, a bigger one. <laughs> Still 30, but yeah. So we'll, we'll keep going through. Uh, that was far too many. I won't do too many. just wanted to give you an idea. So basically, I keep doing that. So now I've done that to a few of them. All I've got to do now is all the ones, and obviously you do this once you've done the entire list. So, you know, we've scouted all those players now. I can go back through and I can remove from shortlist holding pen. They'll go from there and they are now being scouted and they are in our default shortlist. So as they get scouted, we'll have all the reports up here for them all the recommendations, ability, all that kind of good stuff, right there ready for us. And that's as kind of easy as it is. There are plenty of other things you can also do by separating them out. And this, again, is really useful whether you're a big club or not, is you can go in here and you could separate players from a certain league. Let's say maybe Brexit happens and you don't want any players from the UK. You know, you, let's say you're playing in somewhere in Europe and they're going to count as a foreign player. So you want to filter out all the UK players. Or maybe you're 
I don't know, in some nation and you don't want a certain player from a certain club or I don't know, there can be various things that you can just filter out. Uh, like all these players where we know that their wages they're on, for example, you could filter out any player above £2,000 a week. You know, you could, you could say, well, actually, I've only got a small budget here. You know, we're in a small club. I can't bring players on a massive wages. You could just filter all them players straight out. So there are so many things you can do there uh, with this kind of holding pen. Now, once you've obviously done all that, like we saw, you just remove them from the shortlist uh, and they would all be in the default tab now. Then once you're done, untick the interested and all the players that wasn't interested in you come back. And you can see they're basically all the big, big clubs uh, around Europe. So then you can just select them all as well and get rid of them. And that's job done. And that's you scoured. So basically what is next is as your scouts go out, they're obviously going to scout players. For example, this is one of them, Federico Semino. Uh, he has, he's won basically like a month ago in game. I scouted that 2019 group just so you can sort of an exact have an example of them you can see here's a few sort of rubbish ones there's a few okay ones up here uh and the idea was you can see how much knowledge you've got so you could send your scouts out again uh by selecting particular ones and assign scout you know particular ones or just from the pool until the full knowledge until it's 100 percent. if you're happy with just as it is there i mean again you can't see like every stat uh amazing like there's odd few here and there but you can basically see his stats for the most part that's effective to his role. So you can make a really good decision about that player. You can see obviously how he's played previously as well. So you can make a sign in there or not. And you're just continually doing that. Other things that I generally would do is under the new search, I'll go in here and I like the advanced one more, is you will get older regions. So I always filter out those because sometimes, especially as the game gets more into it, it will backfill with some like 25 year old, 30 year olds, 28 year olds, which are technically regens, but they're not young. So they're kind of useless to you and they're always garbage players. So another thing to do in that holding pen is just set up one of these. And I just say basically at most, oh, get back here, at most sort of 21. And then, I mean, you can set it lower because at the end of the day, if you're trying to like achieve this, like I can do for the homegrown rule, then generally needs them at like 18, 19 max. So you can even set it lower. But I generally set it to maybe about 20, 21. And anyone above that, again, will show on that holding pen. And then you just when you untick this, you can remove all those players. So or at least you can do it whichever way. Um, but you can do that as well to sort of filter out any old players. You can also do by position. So for example, a lot of my tactics, I might not use a winger. So I'll go in by position and I'll say is natural at left winger. Uh, I don't like how it, I keep clicking here and it goes away. I don't like that. I feel like it shouldn't go away until you press OK, but it's still a beta. It's still a beta. Maybe I have to flag that one up. But for example, attacking mid right. If I'm not playing with attacking mid right, I can now go through and get rid of all these attacking mid right. So maybe not the striker one. He plays multiple roles, but all these players here, I could just go, nope, see you later. Cancel assignment. And that way your scout stops scouting them and move on to the next ones in the list and remove from shortlist. So I've just saved my scouts about 12 assignments there because that's a position that I don't use. So these are all little tips you can do to help you because at the end of the day, if you've got various leagues loaded, we had like 700 odd players in that, in that sort of short list there. Realistically, you're going to have about, I think it's about 10,000 a year. Like when I've done it and I've had loads of leagues loaded, I think it's about 10 to 12,000 players a year. So you realistically need to get rid of as many of those as possible. Now, the thing is, you are going to get rid of some good players. That just is what it is. But the thing is, you've got to think, even with like 30, 40 scouts, that is going to take you years to get through. It just is. So you've got to kind of cut it down in some way. And so whether it's by their affordability, by the nation they're at, by how old they are, by the clubs they're at, by position they're in, or anything like that, you've got to find ways to kind of cut out as many as possible so your scouts have got a chance of getting through them at a decent pace because you've got to remember every year you get another 12,000 more. So if you're spending two years scouting two years ago's regens, you've got another 24,000 waiting and they're now two years older and you've kind of missed the boat. So you've got to really fill it out. So that's kind of the, the way to scout all regens. And there's so much you can do with this method. Um, you know, I say filter wise, once you've scouted them, you can scout by certain 
attribute. So I like to go out and look at sort of filter by determination occasionally or finishing or crossing or defending stats, wherever it might be, and just sort of focus on a particular area. You can look by position, all sorts of good stuff. And just like these guys here that haven't made the cut, a big thing that I generally do is that on my advanced tab, I will filter out by their um, scouting. So I'll go to scouting on here and go for your scout's op opinion of their potential. And I got it says it's at most, I think, is it the most one? Uh, da -da 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 -da, and I generally go three and a half star. So basically, you can see all these players have got a max potential of three and a half star or less. And I get rid of all them because I'm only bothered about. Uh, not three and a half star, four and a half star. I'm only bothered about five star regen players because even a lot of them, when you actually sign them, will go worse. So I fill out all the four and a half stars and below. And again, lots of those players will actually become amazing for you. But this is just another way that I can cut out as many players so that we can try and scout through quicker. And once I've done that, again, cancel any scout reports you've got going on and you've got to do that individually. So like this guy here, you'd have to click him. Uh, and I think there's one there as well. Yep, so we can click these two. We could end their scouting so that we get the scouts back in and onto someone else and then remove them. And that's it, guys. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. I'm trying to get through it as quick as possible so that the video doesn't drag on for ages. But there is so much you can actually do with this tax, uh, technique. But basically, the main things are set up your staff responsibilities, set up your actual scouting shortlist, you know, get all the various things you want to see. This will be coming up in the video, like I said, so you can download my particular scouting shortlist view if you like that one. I will be doing a squad view one as well. Then you can basically go to the control W. Uh, it's a shortcut to it, um, but basically it's the world, and then you want to go world transfers and it takes you to the same screen, but control W saves you all them clicks. Youth intake down the bottom, and then it's going to be sorted by year so like i said just make a note of each time you do it and then you only need to scout that little gap so like say if we've done it now 27th of june and i looked on the 27th of july i only need to look for any players but basically the date here is between those two points and that saves you duplicating them as well because last thing you want is duplicate <laughs> scouting uh players you know ones that you've already got rid of once and then you scout them again you don't want to do that because that just wastes so much time and effort once you've done that obviously back to your scout list and you can filter them out on the holding pen. You can filter them out on the default tab and you can scout them and you can scout them further and you can sign them. <laughs> that is kind of how it is. And what you'll find with this is you will then get a conveyor belt of amazing talents. One year you'll have these lot and a lot of them might be staggered. You know, they might not come for a year or two and then next year you'll have another bunch. And what it generally means is every kind of transfer window, you've got another big batch of youngsters coming through. And it's awesome. I absolutely love it. And that is how I do it on my series. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you took something away from that, then please let me know down in the comments. And if there's anything else you want to see or kind of understand about the region side of the game, then please do let me know in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the next one.